Greetings and welcome. Sorry about the odd graphics. There's no broadband, there's no electricity, and my laptop battery's dying. Strange, top of the pop, circa 1984. Greetings and welcome, my name is Jake Rayson. I am a forest gardener and a forest garden designer. And welcome to today's uh, forest garden live stream, backyard forest live stream, which is about creating a uh, forest garden for a school. I might get cut off, in which case I'll have to revert to my phone. Um, forestgarden.wales forward slash talks forward slash school uh, what's happened is I've been in touch with the uh, local my, my kids youngest local school the primary school and asked them if they'd be interested in a forest garden they said yes I met with the uh, teacher who is responsible for outdoor learning and I've been to see the teacher as well so it's been great so that's all good that's all really really good and we're kind of going ahead with with it. So what I want to talk about is the opportunities, first of all. I'm going to go very fast because my battery is running out. So opportunities, tools, and then beyond beyond the forest garden. So the first thing is the actual opportunities. Uh, and I think this is the most amazing thing. Uh, <laughs> it does look like I'm going to have to switch to my mobile. I think this is the most amazing thing, uh, is the opportunities that are that that are provided by making contact and by getting in touch because they want to run they want it as a quiet space that this they want the uh they want a quiet space for the school to give lessons about out, outdoor lessons and a land art like outdoor art and this is a couple of andy goldsworthy's uh, pieces a very famous uh land artist uh, and it's a collect there's one that, with a collection of images of collection of leaves gr gr graded by color going towards a hole which is incredible and then leaves around the, the the roots of a tree as well and these are all kind of natural colors but they're just kind of organized so i think it's fantastic really really good example and there's so many opportunities for learning as well so there's a forest school which uh forest school is a kind of outdoor school where you learn practical skills and, and build things and create kind of do sculptures and create dens and then there's a wildlife aspect learning about, about yeah, bugs going on bug hunts um, looking at habitats and then there's kind of food aspect as well growing food and then seeing different types of food so there's a whole range of different things I'm just going to bring my notes up oh no maybe I didn't didn't do that um, so there's a whole range of kind of curricular activity that you can link the forest garden into but also uh, there's a range of different there's a range of um, oh just like stuff that you can do that is good fun that is that is great key thing as well to remember about a forest garden is that it is low maintenance and this is a really really big plus selling point if you are interested in setting up a, for, a forest garden in your local school the whole idea once it's established get on um, once it's established then you can then it's much much less maintenance I was speaking to the teacher the other day and she was saying they've got raised beds and it's just, it's great. You get the parents involved and there's a big rush of enthusiasm, but it's a constant. You need to weed constantly with, a, with annual vegetables. You need to weed constantly and water and keep on top of it. And then there's the summer holidays, so it can be really, really difficult. So I'm going to quickly, I'm going to run out of um, battery. So I just really want to quickly show you the site. Uh, this is the site here in the top right hand top right hand corner of the uh, of the field of the sports field and you can just about make out down here let me see if i've got another map of this oh i think i have yeah um you can just about make out the, the school buildings at the bottom and the idea this uh, and it's this area here um that you that is going to be the um oh, it's not going to work this oh yes it is that's the area but the corner of the field that will be um the forest garden and the kind of interesting thing is what you want to do one of the main things it's going to be quiet but you also want to keep it within the view of the school so you can see what's going on so you don't get kids going up there for a it's a primary school and i doubt they go off for crafty crafty fags at break but you want to be able to keep an eye on what's going on as well so there's a distance but there's also kind of view so it's kind of protected from the north and and the other, uh, and around the sides from the and there's a footpath public footpath that runs behind it but it's kind of open to the school so you can see it from a distance but there is still privacy because it's quite a long way but you can still see what's going on so it's kind of like really nice what's so 
interesting about the drop as well is that it is uh, this shape. It's kind of south, south, um, south, southwest facing, but it kind of naturally creates a curved horseshoe shape uh, within which you know you can do so many different things. So um, yeah, let's um, let's move on to <laughs> so the ideas for this shape. I've got eight percent battery left. <laughs> <laughs> so there's loads and loads of ideas and what is fantastic is the, the 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 opportunity to be able to talk to teachers i've only talked to one teacher so far i've had two visits first visit just to say this is what forest gardening is second visit to have a look at the site and go and measure up just kind of basic measuring and then i've been up there as well just to walk around the, the public uh footpath uh so th around the back and around and, and the field next to it so it's but she's going to be talking to other teachers as well about what can be done so i'm going to get some sketches together just rough idea for the kind of shape and list of ideas about what we could do uh with with the space with the forest garden and how that can tie in with what other teachers are doing as well so two percent that tree really is properly properly broken there's three different there's three different things the the <laughs> what was the first one the first one was opportunities Oh, I can't remember. Oh, tools. That was it. First one was opportunities. The second one is tools. And the third one is um, outside or expand or paths or something. Um, so the first one, opportunities. So going back to the ideas. So I've had a look at the site. It's got lots and lots of potential talking to other... With the, well, I haven't even done it yet, but talking to other teachers and, uh, and to the kids as well. Don't forget, you need to talk to the kids... I mean, this will be kind of quite a little bit tricksy, but like doing survey or doing some sort of, um, oh, some kind of like classroom activity where you say, what would you like to see and well, how does that tie in? But get people's feedback and get that feed that into the design. So the design I've got for the, for the, for the idea I've got at the moment is, 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 is a horseshoe shape because then it's pointing back at the school, yet it's protected from the, from the public footpath. And the football field, football fields on one side, public footpath on the other, and it softens the the sharp angles of the fences, and it hides the ugly chain link fences as well. So, yeah, lots and lots of ideas, and the ideas are fantastic because the ideas, you know, once you start thinking, um, then you start to get the the sense of the potential for it. So, uh, while well, habitats. Just talking about habitats, just kind of is brilliant. Forest gardens are fantastic for habitats. Beauty of a garden is that you can create multiple habitats relatively easily, relatively easily. So you can create a diversity of habitats that you wouldn't necessarily see in in the wild. That would take uh, a while, quite a few years to uh, to come about naturally. You can actually create these this this diversity very quickly in a garden. Uh, and I just couple of couple of about well, three things, four things, or maybe five things. <laughs> Firstly, is the plants, the diversity of plants. So I want to create a screen. So there's going to be a windbreak. There's going to be fruit trees, nut trees. There's going to be perennial vegetables. There'll be climbers uh, over the chain link fence as well. I think you can extend that. That'd be quite a nice thing to be able to do. So you have cl so, so climbers will cover the chain link fence for 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 for, for, for a, a, a fair distance. Uh, and you have shrubs, edible shrubs, fruit shrubs. So you've got a diversity of of plants and a diversity of habitats within those plants as well. Then you have the actual habitats that you're creating. So uh, one of the one of the key one of the things that the that, that, that school would like is to have the forest garden to provide materials for the outdoor schooling the kind of forest garden school stuff and the, the art classes so clay so like a clay pit uh which will be kind of churned up and will will we'll have edges to it um leaves so you have autumn color leaves uh different different shaped leaves um a diversity of different leaves a diversity of different species wild flowers and I think this is really, really important for always. My take is grow native plants where possible. Wherever you are in the world, grow native plants where possible as part of a forest garden because they support a greater range of diversity. And wildflowers are fantastic for this. But again, 
if you're creating different if, if you're creating different habitat then you get a wider range of wildflowers one of my favorite gardeners i really i've only spoken to him a couple of times there's a chap called john little and i think he's absolutely brilliant i've got total respect for the guy um he has and i love it because he creates stuff that is like green green roofs um he creates bee hotels as part of like bike parks like a bike shed where you where you park your bike or bus shelters um and he create he's got he's got a logo for a project that he has and it's got a bird's nest which where the o is of a letter there's an entrance to a bird's nest and, the, and it's a blue tits are nesting there now and it's just like incorporating the wildlife into the design and by and he uses a lot of geometric shapes as well so that when you have this space and you go this is obviously it's a designed space it's a circle it's a curve it's very very clearly delineated this just draws people in and engages them and makes them look rather like or oh, in the Tate Museum in Liverpool many years ago I saw a piece I can't remember the artist's name actually and it was these two yellow lines against this dark background and it was this kind of crisscross of of squares and it was just like I thought what the heck is that that's odd that's really so you go up and you have a look at it and it's this kind of resin cast and then it took a took a I don't know how long it took not not that long but it's it you realize that it's the curb and double yellow lines and the paint and the pavement and it's that you put it on a wall and you say this is art you put a border on it you say this is a garden and then the plants you've got a red campion or um, garlic mustard or like a, a greater stitch wort or you know you name it wildflowers na uk native wildflowers in that situation and people will look and they will pay attention and it's much more ah you know this is a design space but look at the beauty here rather than it being part of a verge or part of a at the edge of a field or you know it's it's it kind of changes the dynamic and changes people's interaction with it so i think it's really really important a very good bit that he's done as well is he plays around with different growing medium and i think this is this is this is brilliant because he has a, there's a, he lives in Essex and there's the A13 which has been having a lot of work done and some leftover sand so he's got like big piles of sand that he gets kind of like waste sand now the big piles of crushed concrete mixed up with chalk and just oh he's got coal he's got like crushed coal uh, and, he, and you get stuff growing in it and some things will like these conditions and. He puts it into uh, circular shapes, edged like uh, with uh, metal edging, which you can get from from building suppliers. I'm not. I, I were very interested in finding out about it actually. <clears throat> so, what I'd love to do is to have a brown field bed, which would be local crushed concrete, for example, whatever the building, whatever building materials you can find. If there's going to be some demolition work going on. Find that material, put it into a bed put some wildflowers in there and the low nutrients a lot of wildflowers I'm sure quite a lot of you will know this a lot of wildflowers don't like rich soil don't like a rich loam they much prefer to have low nutrients and it, and it gives a great and enables them to get established otherwise you end up with docks and nettles and and brambles and docks and nettles and brambles are fine don't get me wrong but that's if you've got like a rich pasture that's what you get um, whereas if you have like a very kind of if you have a different growing medium you have a, a diversity so this is fantastic you can actually create lots of different habitats in a very small space oh and sand for there's certain bees that will uh, create um, their home in, in sand and different types of sand and different yeah great coarse, coarseness and all the rest of it so that's really really exciting another idea and you'll feel free to welcome this I've started experimenting here with a particular bed. I just put in some wild plants, some red campion and some fennel and uh, some uh, columbine. And I just let everything else go apart from I take out nettles and docks, but everything else is it's a free for all. It's a, it's, it's a jumble. It's a jumble jungle. But um, I just editing it. I'm not adding anything more. I'm not taking anything. I'm just taking out the stuff I don't want. Um, and that's which isn't a vast amount 
And I think this is kind of a very interesting experiment. I'd love to do this experiment. It's to set different beds up with different growing mediums and then see what comes in. So there's a lot of potential there. And with native plants as well, there's a lot of potential for different using different species. So another thing that I've started doing here is experimenting with native ground cover if you, with kind of uh, Martin Crawford's book Creating a Forest Garden there's a lot of ground covers from all over all over the world and I'm interested in trying out native ground cover not so much for the harvest for, for humans but as um, habitat and food for for insects and wildlife and so uh, what's come up in the in the chat is a discussion about forget-me-nots um, and that's kind of really interesting as a, as a temporary ground cover whilst other ground covers get established. And so, and foxgloves, um, so there's lots of different kind of uh, potential for, 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 for using different species. And yeah, where the hell was I going with this? This is a problem, not having a, not having a script. Um, anyway, so yeah, experimenting with, 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 with different, different plants in different beds. And this gives you the opportunity to do this. Oh, that was it, thistle. There's um, a native thistle now, excuse my botanical pronunciation, pronunciations, Circium, uh, C-I-R-S-I-U-M, and there's tuberosum, and there's another one. I'm fairly sure they're native as well. And it's like the thistle without the thorns, I think, could be wrong. Uh, but it's that, like, greater knapweed. It's kind of like plants that will give a, that will do something, but which suit the situation. So... Lots and lots of kind of ideas there, and then the other ideas for habitat always is like a pond. You go well, it's a primary school. You can't have a pond because kids might fall in, and that'll be and it's a long way from the school. Can't have a pond, ah, but you might might be able to. So you can. There is the grating, kind of serious, heavy duty grating, um, which you see over uh, uh, ugh, like uh, air vents and things like in the, in a city. But heavy duty stuff. Um, imagine having a pond underneath there so you can take the stuff up and, and, and clean things out and there's access for wildlife and wildlife can get in and out but small children can't and yet you and then you'd be able to walk over it and look into it i think that'd be a fantastic uh, idea maybe quite maybe maybe too much construction involved with that one or failing that a marshland you use um, a semi-permeable kind of sheet or like black plastic with holes poked in it and then you create an air which is very very marshy and again that creates a, a diversity of uh, a diversity of habitats so lots and lots and lots of ideas and how they relate to the different things that the school wants to use the space for and there's obviously there's seating there's like focal points there's like dividing the area up into different uses there's yeah it's it's the building materials hazel for um, and dogwood for, for for building materials for making dens all sorts of things and I want to get some odd fruit in there as well so Cornus capitata Bentham's cornel uh, or Cornus cusa Chinese Chinese dogwood has these amazing uh, kind of strawberry almost strawberry kind of cross between a strawberry and a passion fruit and they look crazy they look great um, bladder nut looks amazing as well um, and edible so it's just being able to say they, there are these different fruit and nuts and different produce and things that you can eat hostas and solomon seal that you wouldn't normally think about eating but they are edible and then and then there's like a whole lot of plants and stuff you've got to be kind of obviously you've got to be careful you don't want to plant stuff in which children will eat and they'll get that get poisoned but but it's all part of the part of the mix part of um of of kind of figuring it out so that's the opportunities i think absolutely brilliant so the next one was the tools, and I kind of wanted to show you the different tools that I'm using. Um, <laughs> I wanted to show you the different tools that I was using, uh, which I can't really, I'm gonna to have to go through them <clears throat> off the top of my head. So, firstly is, uh, oh, I use, I use a thing called Simple Note, which is like a note make, really, really basic note making text, Really, really basic bit of software which you can get on your phone, which you can get on your computer, and you take notes in it. And it's like uses something called Markdown. If you're ever writing any any kind of content at all, Markdown is quite a useful uh, way of writing. It's kind of like writing email, like how you format email. Like so, asterisk means bold, and an underline means italic, and 
an asterisk and then a line means a bullet point and that kind of thing. So it's really, really simple to learn. You can pick it up in a few minutes, but it's very, very powerful because you can, with simple note, you can create web pages. You can publish a, pay, a note, which is absolutely brilliant for for creating notes and sharing information with people. So I'm sharing the information about the you know links to the CAD files and the images that I've got. I can I can share them and, and what I think and what you know what what writing down ideas and stuff that can go into Simple Note and then I can share. I've got a template. The uh, the notes will be available. Um, I ought to do another. Oh, I, I should do another uh, thing about my 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 process for designing a forest card. I'll do that another time, um, but it's kind of useful. So Simple Note's a really, really nice way of sharing information get, and creating a simple, simple web page that you can share with a couple of people. So that I totally recommend doing that. I'll do another live stream about how I go around designing a forest garden, the tools that I use, because again, that might be quite useful for other people. I, I want more forest garden designers in the world. Second thing I use uh, for images, for hosting my own images and s sorting out my own images, I use a, a service called Cloudinary, and there's a free um, tier on it um, which is fine for my purposes I make all my images small and then upload them so I've kind of basically got free use for the rest of my life so simple note cloud and airy and then for sharing images that are other people's images there's I use Pinterest it's a bit uh, <laughs> that's a bit in your face but it's actually kind of very easy way of saying how about this garden how about that garden how about this these plants and being able to share images of plants very very quickly with other people as well so uh, Simple Note, Cloudinary, uh, Pinterest, and then for the techie side of it, I use satellite photographs and which one I use. So it's bing.com forward slash maps or Google Maps or Apple Maps. Um, depend Which one I use depends upon which gives the best resolution. And I use that as a foundation for the actual design itself. Import that into QCAD. So if you are learning about forest garden design, learn CAD because it's cool. If you're not, don't worry. Um, but for my purposes, it's a very quick way for me to, to create a design and get some ideas out of the sketch. And also pencil and paper. I just did do a very simple <laughs> sketch. So it looks like someone's face. Uh, and then just, I mean, it, my, my drawing skills are absolutely rubbish. But um, I go, oh, okay, well, circle. So you've got the horseshoe shape in the corner of the field. And there could be like a central circle with circles around it, or it could be three circles overlapping, uh, like a nice wiggly path. Here's the hedge, smiley face. And then just kind of keep on going, just kind of get some ideas. Because what's important is not... The execution is important, but the execution is secondary. What's important is the actual idea, the kind of use for it. Um, and there's a kind of great joy that I think is coming from this particular project, because it kind of made me realise... It's the function. It's how the um, I did. I did have a very nice kind of. <laughs> I had a very nice kind of little bullet point list there, but it's how things are used. Once something has a use, a purpose. Uh, it ha once something has a function, like this forest garden will be very functional. It will be providing for lots of different things. It'll be lots of different things that it can do, which is brilliant. And then that gives a purpose to the work that you do. So now when I go, I need to sketch out some ideas about the possible layouts for the garden, but I've got a very, not a clear idea, but I've got a, a, a very exciting idea about different possibilities from all the ideas that I've talked about before. So what you have the function and it gives you the purpose. Um, and I'm not really fast, you know, what CAD software I use or what image service I use. It doesn't really matter. What matters is the ideas and the kind of the, the creating the, the, gar the forest garden itself. And then that gives you meaning. And <laughs> once you have meaning, you go, oh, that's fun, isn't it? I mean, it's just, it's mean, it's a forest garden. It's, but it's great. It's like, this is what we do things for. This is the meaning that we have in life is finding the, is finding this purpose, is finding this, make something that is, that, that is good fun to create and that will benefit people. There you go. The meaning of life. You weren't expecting that in a live stream today, were you? Um, and there was a, a photograph I found as well. It's it reasons to be cheerful. I mean, it is like uh, kids planting trees because what I love about forest gardening as well, it's not about you. <laughs> and what I love about gardening, I love about, yeah, forest gardening in particular. It's about providing for other people and for other generations and 
for wildlife it's not just about humans it's about everybody it's about everything in a, in a space so it's great it's like a really really positive thing and there's a photograph of uh, three kids from turkey planting a tree and the you know kids planting trees you can't beat that um and then finally my last the last thing i was going to talk about was beyond that was it um so it's just that idea of paths there was a lovely little photograph uh, which you will see if you look at the slides excuse me there's a photograph of um, ronnie the forest garden dog ronnie barker and he's running up the path and i wanted to show you the reason i showed that particular photograph is it's the path which leads to that corner and it's council land and it's filled that there's a kind of triangle of land adjoining the playing field and it's filled with uh, stinging nettles and bramble so my next thing is to go is to talk to the council is to phone up the council Carmarthenshire council and say there's a triangle of land it's not being used I'm putting a forest garden in I would rather that bramble wasn't coming into the forest garden can I do something with it and they're going to turn around and go yeah so long as it doesn't cost us any money I'd imagine they will say that so it's making these connections and so that's great and then the teacher said oh yes if you could follow the footpath it goes across uh, there's a there's a new park next to the old people's home and the dentists uh, and it's just got grass in it and there's a concrete path which goes around the outside in a kind of wiggly way like maybe if you're walking your dog you might walk like that but there's no other reason I don't know it's, an, it's a beautiful space but there's not an awful lot going on. So it's like, oh yeah, cool. Well, maybe we could get some sort of forest garden -y thing going on there as well to the next stage, once this bit's in place, once we've done the council land and and then that then then there's that bit. And then you go the other way and it's it's kind of great. It expands. Yeah. And uh, this is the idea of expanding like uh, that that it's not just a forest garden, it's a way of connecting with other people. So that uh, I'm talking to the teacher, but I'll be talking to other teachers, I'll be talking in, if indirectly, but with kids and with parents. And then there's the community, the county council for about, about the land. There'll be the old people's home next door, about if they want anything to do with this piece of land, which, which is next to them, talk to the dentists, talk to the, uh, the, the town council. Um, and it all kind of feeds in, there's all these other ideas. And this comes into my my big idea, which is, which is not really a yeah it's nothing nothing major, but it's a, a thousand acre forest, the thousand acre forest garden, and the whole idea about the thousand acre forest garden is that we're growing things now where we can, which will benefit. You know, we haven't got long, but currently in in twenty fifty, the projections are up to three and a half degrees Celsius. Uh, temperature rise now 2050 is only 29 well 28 and a half years away it's not very long and that people need to make a change now to how i think dismantling capitalism and starting all over again will be a good start whatever but let's kind of figure it out because of the, uh, the, the, it's going to be an absolute disaster so whatever happens forest gardens are a a response to this so it will create a better environment and i really hope i really really hope that we're not in a situation where we have to rely upon local forest gardens for food but in 30 years time who knows where we're going to be so i think it's it, it's good on all levels it's it's like it's a very good thing to do is to create um forest gardens because they kind of show a connection they connect people with nature and they show a connection with nature as well and how you can expand that into other areas like um, agriculture and ornamental gardening um, and kind of wildlife uh, preservation, conservation and how people can live uh, much more, uh, yes, it kind of sounds a bit crap, but more in tune with nature. Anyway, so that's just the, yeah, the, the, the kind of expanding the vision and it's a natural process. and. It, was, it really, really depends upon individuals, where they come from, their different positions, and also the positions of the locality. So rather like uh, that growing native plants, where possible in a forest garden, really depends upon where you are in the world. Likewise, creating a thousand acre forest garden 
really depends upon where you are in the world and what your setup is and what resources you have and what connections you've got and all the rest of it. But I think as an idea, I think it's a very powerful idea. So there we go. That's uh, half past. I'm going to go over to Zoom. Absolutely no idea um, what, the, what the username and password is. I'll say goodbye now and then I'll come back to it. So thank you very much for watching. I hope that's useful and I shall see you, see you soon. Cheers. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.